did he live in fear? We knew he had an armored car, he wore a bulletproof vest. No, absolutely not. Even though he existed in a climate of intimidation and fear, Dr. Tiller got up every morning and put on a button that said, attitude is everything. One of the most remarkably positive and courageous men I've ever known. Adam, you were in the church. The first hymn is being sung. What do you hear? Uh, we just sitting there with my family and friends. We just heard it sound like a pop. Just a, a pop as if a balloon had gone off? Yes, just that, that's like, uh, we had just sounded like a pop and I just turned to my br little brother. I said, you know, what was that? Kind of thought it just sounded like a balloon popping. Mrs. Tiller was in the choir. Does this mean that she saw what happened? I don't believe she did. Uh, he was back in the foyer of the church. Yes, you, you could not s see the foyer from uh, where, we, where the sanctuary is. You can't really see out there. And you heard her, her scream, her cry of distress? Yes. Given the controversy and given the danger, why was he committed to doing this? What was it exactly that he wanted to make sure that he was accomplishing? Dr. Tiller always said he had fallen in love uh, with the doctor-patient relationship and confronting and dealing with women in the times of utmost stress and the most difficult circumstances imaginable was a rewarding experience to him. And the, the fact that he is one of, if not the only one of two, very few doctors who perform these services speaks to his dedication and his courage uh, uh, throughout his life. And Mr. Thompson, is it true that he said once to you that his life story would be told in the lives of the women he felt he'd help save? Yes, it's interesting. During the recent trial, someone suggested that he needed to write a biography of his life. And Dr. Tiller's response was, I don't need to write anything. I will live on through the lives of my patients and my story will be told through their stories, uh, the women whose needs have been met. And I thought that reflected his mindset in terms of serving women and having, again, I, I just use the phrase servant attitude towards those patients. I know you've spoken with Mrs. Tiller. What has she said to you? Uh, we've just had brief conversations. She's grief stricken and we've tried not to uh, impinge upon her privacy. Uh, she, uh, of course, uh, is grieving uh, very seriously, but has exhibited the strength that has characterized her and her entire family over the years. Well, again, we thank you both so much for being with us this morning, for getting up early. All right, thank, thank you. you. And of course, it's not just Mrs. Tiller, it's four children and 10 grandchildren who have lost him. Thank you. Thank you.